Good evening viewers, welcome to a sporty session of Dr. Kamli Rao's Masterclass. See, and I would rattle off in Bangla to my teachers, to my friends because I didn't know any other language. Yeah, but then when you went to Kandiruva Stadium, you had to be bribed. Har ek round ke liye, ek nutrient chocolate up ke liye. I don't think, I think it's each one's mindset on how they, you know, feel comfortable with, but I'm not comfortable. I can walk around bare feet everywhere. <laughs> which was <laughs> what's <laughs> <laughs> That's so that very was, good. Yeah. But uh, having said that, uh, you've gone through your education and uh, what kind of a role did your mother play in your um, training, in your mental stamina and uh, your growth as a sports person? As a young child, when you see your mom not allowing you to do anything at home, struggling to make both kids have an education because my dad was the only earning member uh, and it wasn't much to be able to survive that and to have two children who are international athletes and to be competing with no money in hand uh, and to see that kind she never let us believe that it was not possible even if she had to mortgage her jewellery to ensure that we went for the championship. She did that every single time we had to go for a championship. There was always food on the table. We never knew any kind of... She said, you just go train, do your job, go to school and you won't believe it till the seventh or eighth grade, till we told my mom, stop it. She would drop us to school, walking, come back, do all the house chores, bring hot lunch for us, come back and then pick us up again, come back and walk us to the country was stadium. It's a lot of dedication. So when you see something like that and the kind of determination and the strength, enormous amount of strength and courage, and I think I get that courage from her because that's what I have learned. She is my role model. Uh, without her, I would not be sitting here today. Definitely not. So whatever I have achieved, is my mother's contribution and her blessings. But that's really great because particularly not being a sports person herself Absolutely. and not knowing what it entails to become a sports person and looking at your nutrition and making sure that you don't have any kind of malnutrition. And the belief. And the belief that you will be able to reach your yeah. goal. But then you also lived up to her expectation. Yes, and you I should. Think. Because it's it's a two-way street. Absolutely. Isn't it? Absolutely. And your sister also did the same. Absolutely. When you compare the kind of uh, you know support you got uh, in terms of the management, in terms of the government, and to what children are getting now with the sports authorities of India as well as the at the uh, sports well, ministry level, is, yeah. uh, you know you have the dietitians and you have the management coming with you uh, wherever you all go, and uh, to what you had then about the dietitian, the nutritionist, etc. Now you were just talking to me before and you said, are you a non-vegetarian? Then it's chicken and if you're a vegetarian, it's only paneer. So what do you feel? Do you feel a sense of remorse that you know you never had much and you know at least they're having now, so it's good for them? No, it's good because everything has to evolve and it has to be better than what, you know, what we have gone through. Uh, why should our records still be standing? Milka Singh's record stood for 38 years. My 200 meters record still stands in the state today. Usha's record still stands. <laughs> I'm saying we came in an era which we had nothing. nothing. Today when you have everything, records, once, records are meant to be broken. Absolutely. And the more it breaks, that means the health of the nation or the health of the sporting better. fraternity is better. And that's what I want to see. With the kind of things that is laid out to them, uh, nobody travels. I send my own academy children, though my academy is just for junior grassroots program. My child who just went to Bhuvaneshwa, went, uh, won the silver medal in 400 meters, Jyotika, we flew her with the coach. We're not going to send her unreserved or tell her mother to, you know, uh, pay for her travel. Pay for her travel. She's an ASHA worker. I'm sponsoring her completely. So I would not allow, I head an organization called Bangalore Athletic, you know, I'm the president of the Athletic Federation Bangalore Open. And our children, when we select a team, they go for the national inter-district championship. We house them in a hotel. We see that they go reserved and we give them a DA allowance. But I want to see performance. 
absolutely that so, is absolutely. and i always tell the ministry you are doling out that much kind of money please make the athletes accountable to it nowhere in the world nowhere in the world sports persons are treated the way india treats them but what about the management that goes with the sports person are they accountable none then none is accountable if the australian team didn't do well at the previous olympics the commissioner was asked to resign okay he takes the accountability of the team not performing at the olympic games mm -hmm. today nobody is held accountable what happened to our team with the uh, with the sports person um, mr kalmadi <laughs> <laughs> that was such a big scam yes i think 2010 commonwealth games really brought out to light the ills of indian sport and that trickled down right till the bcci we've been only talking about it i think i was the blacklisted athlete so called in the indian scenario at that point in time because i took on ministers i took on the administration because if we are representing the country we cannot be treated in that fashion you know you train in nehru stadium and you see on the balcony heaps of omelet kept who would want to eat after a 3 hour training you're not going to come back and you know just take one on heap of you treat us well we are representing the country and i would stage dharnas margaret alva would come to the kitchen you know and then two days it's all right and again it's back to uh, i think it would have been better because without athletes there's no sports there's no sports administration but i feel this gotten worse because as sports people there is no unity you, you know, know every sports person yes because But everybody is, is so? everybody is trying to safeguard their own you know agar selection nahi hua kya kare why why get into trouble you know so i rather get selected i be in the good books i didn't want to do that i just didn't want to do that so when 2010 games happened and uh, in fact much before 2010 kalmadi and me would always be like this in sport because when we qualified for the olympic games he was throwing such a tantrum uh, and at the olympic village he wanted to have 24 hours before we have had some 15 or 16 selections to qualify for the olympic games we qualify for the olympic games at the olympic village unheard of till today they have an indian trial to select the final team again 24 hours before the race Isn't unheard of ridiculous ridiculous so the entire lot of them came particular athlete didn't want to come in for the trial and i just took my bag after warm up and i just walked up and he said ashwini come back to the track i used the worst language and i said to hell with you he said you will not talk to me in such un i said you can send me back i don't want to represent the country with this kind of a atmosphere but nobody will stand up nobody will say either there is vested interest or you want to please them so that your place is secure i would never compromise on that but how does this ad hoc changes take place under whose instructions who's questioning them it's they all thought kalmadi was the father of indian sport but did and he you have the political sports? background you have the political background you are the you know so called party head and everybody thought sport revolved around them so even after that he would say ashwini dur se baat karo wahan se baat karo i mean i would be very cordial with him but that's a kind of elections would happen in nehru stadium with knives gunda gardi everything would be there we would see it we'd be training they'll be there we've seen that the dirty politics to just stay in power because it was the greatest visibility for them nobody would otherwise know kalmadi or uh, anybody else we came alhotra 40 years in archery association he has his agm in his house so i'm saying you know i think the problem in india is letting go you don't know when to let go it's so difficult to let go 
to go out in, with grace, whether it's sports persons, whether it's administration. And I always wanted to get out in grace, with grace. Never with, no, no compromise on anything. And I would take on the challenge, whether it is when they wrote me off when I did movies to coming back and winning four national medals. Uh, challenge is always uh, good, it makes me better. But then you started a campaign. All right. So what was this campaign about? We started a campaign at the 2010 Commonwealth Games called the Clean Sport India. Yeah. Uh, and 10 Olympians got together and launched it in Delhi at the Olympic Games. I mean, at the Commonwealth Games, and I was president of the organization, basically to try and create a movement of sports persons to bring to light what Indian Sport Administration is all about. How many politicians are running every federation? Why aren't sports people who want to get into administration not allowed to get into administration? And that movement led us to meeting every political party head numerous times to say, let us look at a new sporting environment. Tickets were, you know, as I mentioned earlier, stadiums were empty. We are hosting the 2010 Commonwealth Games. The athletes are running with no spectators, but you go for tickets, it's all sold out. So this kind of thing and young athletes who would spend 365 days training on the track weren't allowed to witness the games. So coaches and athletes would call us up and say, Madam, ek baad dek lo ke andar ja sakte hai ki nahi. To that kind of thing. So I think we brought that out and in some way I feel it was necessary, it was the right time to bring it. Uh, I feel happy that today people are talking about it, including the BCCI. And that's how the sports code came into with under Justice Mudgal. I was part of the sports code when it initially. And we took out every federation. That time Mr. Jaitley was heading BCCI. He came with his full files. I said, it doesn't matter. If you're saying BCCI is so clean, please tell the rest of the federations to follow you. Why are they sticking on? That's excellent. You were also a part associated with the Special Olympics yeah. uh, program for 12 years, and especially for the mentally challenged. What made you get into it and what were the changes you brought into it? In fact, Mr. Ramesh Khanna, who was heading Special Olympics at that point, introduced me to uh, the challenged children in sport. And he says, can you do a little bit of, you know, uh, kind of uh, fitness program for them and see if you can help them out? And I said, the day I retire, I'll come and join you. And the day I retired, I was mm -hmm. on Special Olympic board. And that's how I met Kiran. Oh. And John and you know, John would all, I would raise funds for them, I would be part of the team training or whether it was the Winter Olympics or the Summer Olympics and it was a change of scenario that I loved. Just to be able to see these young children, uh, I think I realized that we are more challenged than they are. We are more challenged than, they would approach everything with such enthusiasm and joy in every little thing, in every exercise, they would be the showpiece everywhere we went. Uh, it's just something that I wanted to do and I stayed on for a very long time, raising funds and being part of the team and uh, I think John and Kiran was our major support at that point. And John would always say, you're like a teacher, always telling us this is your target, this is your target. <laughs> But we did a great job at that point in time and you know, it was Excellent. great to see um, hundred medals these kids would come back with uh, to the country, you know, so it was, it was lovely. Yeah. And about your husband, Datta Karambaya, I mean he's been a great support to you. He used to play badminton I think. No, he was a hockey, junior hockey player. Hockey yeah, player. But yeah. your two children play badminton, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so it's been a sports family, so to say. In well, I didn't know Datta, uh, you know, when I met him, he was already into business. Okay. Uh, I didn't know him as uh, a, a hockey, hockey player, player though mm -hmm. his cousin uh, uh, Somaya was the Indian captain at that point in time in the camp as an Indian hockey captain and he was his cousin. So that's how I got introduced to Datta through him. Uh, but he was already in the automobile industry and, you know, they were heading uh, the Maruti dealerships. Uh, so he wasn't a sports person, but uh, he has already achieved, uh, you know, at the varsity level and all that. 
my two daughters yes uh, we used to play club level badminton uh, very intense both my husband and I uh, and she would come along as a little toddler with her small racket and keep hitting the wall keep hitting the wall every evening while we played our thing and she just got hooked on to it and she started winning uh, you know at the age of eight nine she started winning the state championships and wow. uh, all that so she had a natural flair and a very athletic body with her uh, a lot of grace my younger one was the naughty one who would you know she played golf better than badminton i would say you know but they all moved on uh, so they did, right? uh, yeah anisha was up till the national level she pv sindhu all are the yeah. same batchmen they all competed against each other at that point in time and then anisha went on to the us to do her graduation and my younger daughter dipali moved on to paris to do her you know culinary yeah. art and uh, management and just Oh, very good, very good, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but as long as they've played sport, so it's but good. As a result of this, now you've got a nice school also in uh, Kuruk and it's got 800 students. And what's important is that you still continue with your sports. Now you were in school and now you're you know, running a school. So do you impart the same kind of training that the nuns and the sisters gave you and the support that they gave you in sports to the children that you're now looking after in the school in Kuruk? School was, you know, I worked for Vijaya Bank for almost 16 and a half years. Uh, back then we would get an appointment based on our sporting career. Nationalized public sector banks, all public services would take, they had a percentage to take in sports persons. So I remember before my PUC exams, I was called by the chairman and he said, okay, tomorrow you start work. And I was there in the bank the very next day and my whole department was waiting for my result to come in. <laughs> so that, you know, we were called to give it and then I did my uh, uh, correspondence course. But what I realized in this journey of mine is to climb that corporate ladder, you needed a basic education. Yes. And it was unfortunate that some of my counterparts in sports would not get a promotion because they weren't a graduate. Yes. And uh, sport was integral part of education because I'm a product of school games. Uh, and for me, education was equally important. And we have thrived. We have thrived in that environment. Today, unfortunately, the pandemic has brought about the wellness and sport aspect as an important factor for everybody. Absolutely. But it has never changed. It's always been like that. Whether you take the Gurukul system of education back then, sport and physical fitness was an integral part of our education. And that's something that when my husband and my, you know, I thought, I, ret I just resigned from the bank and I said, let's do something because I had the experience of working with the children in Special Olympics as well as Parikrama Humanity Foundation where we educated uh, you know, slum and orphan children of Bangalore City, create a robust sports program for them. Uh, so let's do something where we can contribute something for our hometown because Coog has produced over 100 international national players, army men, everybody. Yet there was no school in Coog. There was not even a, uh, you know, astroturf hockey field. So we said we will do something for our own hometown. And that's how we decided to start a school which integrates sports and academics from grade 1 till grade 12. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, and it's a very important part of our curriculum. Excellent. So every child, you, uh, you know, it's a nice big campus where we have three core sport as part of my uh, sports foundation uh, which is athletics hockey and 10 meter shooting but the entire school children are access to the entire environment of 27 acres which has all the facility and sports becomes a one-hour program and our teams comes from that so it's good. So you're practicing what you preached and I think you're putting... Yeah, and I, my kids in have good. gone into Sai hockey, six, seven of them are in the hockey team with the Sai. So a lot of them, we are looking at only the grassroots because it was important. Everybody talks about elite sport. 
uh, sports persons. But to come up there, if you don't develop your grassroots, how do you reach that point? Today, everybody is pumping in money to people who have achieved, who were already Olympians. But the journey that is required to reach that is very important. And for that, you need to have a very important and robust program at the base so that the base of your pyramid is large for champions to emerge out of choice and not chance. Absolutely. I think that's really good. So Ashwini, it has really been a pleasure talking to you, but I would also want you to tell my viewers what will be the mantra if all of them watching you want to be Ashwini Nachappa. What is your mantra to them? For everybody watching, uh, I would only say don't make excuses for anything in life. There is no ifs and buts. It is the now that we all work for. It is how we approach the now, not later. Now is important and the byproducts will always be successful. So approach everything with equal amount of enthusiasm, courage and a sense of pride in doing whatever you love to do. So, Ashwini, thank you very much. I'm sure every bit, every bit of what you've said has gone in so well with my viewers and they've enjoyed the program. I've enjoyed it as well myself <laughs> because even during the days when I used to watch you on the black and white television as well, I used to enjoy I said, you know what, I wish I had a daughter who would follow you, you know, with grace and thank dignity you. that you actually brought to the uh, field of cinema for women as well as onto the field track events as well. So thank you very much Ashwini thank for you, coming Doctor. to this it's event. It's been such an honour, such okay. an honour. Thank you and, so much. And uh, well viewers, we've had another exciting episode of Dr. Kamini Rao's Masterclass. And till we have the next one, see you soon.